I fucking hate this game. No, this isn't a joke, this isn't a bit, I genuinely hate this game. Skip it about- I mean, I have over a thousand hours on it, and yet I still despise almost every part of this thing. But I also love it, but it's fucking annoying. But... Okay, I guess I should explain. Hearts of Iron 4 is a real-time grand strategy game about World War II. Weltkrieg 2, my nick. Look, I know it gets overdone a lot, but what are you gonna do? Make a strategy game about trench warfare? It appeals to the Il Duce in all of us, conquering nations as yours triumphs. But it also balances that, as every declaration of war, let alone a conquest, is a serious investment for your entire industry, population, and military. This is Paradox's most detailed war game yet, and while Europa Universalis covers 400 years, Hoy does about 10, thus making for a more concise and densely packed playthrough each time. However, this also fucks with diplomacy, because realistically, for 5 years before the inevitable boogaloo, you can't exactly change the national beliefs and identity of an entire country. Well, except for Macedonia. <laughs> Thing is, this change affects a lot more than just spies and trade. It also means that effectively, the minds and rationale of all European, American, and Asian leaders will be swapped with that of a drunk Serbian hobo, and they will inevitably do some seriously stupid shit. What the hell is wrong with you? In Hearts of Iron, you get to pick a country in 1936 to play as. The game has a lot of tabs and different little mechanics, so it seems intimidating at first, but trust me on this, it really isn't that complicated. Some countries have focus trees with different historical paths your nation can take. Some have Jack and Shit. And Jack left town. The main ones are Germany, Britain, Frank, Salty Volva, United States of America, Pasta, and a bunch of little ones that are actually interesting to play as. Each nation has four general political ideologies you can pick between, those being communist, hey gender, fascist, and boring. They offer up different branches of your focus tree and potential allies, otherwise more or less the same in terms of gameplay outside of the specific country events or bonuses. As a rule of thumb, you want to start off in Europe, as most of your neighbors will have interesting and dynamic events or focuses, and the terrain is generally plain and easy to traverse. Africa has no independent nations if you exclude Liberia, I guess. And uh, Asian land wars are about as fun in-game as they are in real life. Yo! The Americas are developed, sure, but the US imposes a no fun allowed rule, thus making the war game transform into a very bootleg Google Maps for the first two hours. Speaking of no fun allowed, I swear to god, this game must be an gamer propaganda tool, because if you play it for long enough, you will develop an intense and fiery hate for the British. This game requires patience already, but when you combine that with the fact that the UK guarantees the independence of every backwater 13 house shithole in Europe and the Middle East, it makes the early game such a fucking slog. Of course, in typical British fashion, then they completely abandon said country, but force you into a war with the Allies, which is always so much fun. Why is it so much fun, Peter? Well, dear viewer, let me explain. If you've played EU4, one way Hoi yet again distinguishes itself from that game is that since it's centered around World War II, the wars don't end when you have enough war score, but when the enemy unconditionally surrenders. Sure, this means you aren't limited to taking three provinces at most in the peace deal like in EU4, but it also means that Albania can own and hold half of Russia with no repercussion. <laughs> Back to why the Allies are fucking assholes, if you want to capitulate them and get a peace deal, not only do you have to steamroll France, which granted isn't that hard, but you also have to naval invade the British Isles, something nigh impossible to do if you don't start off with a medium sized navy, as ships take longer to build in this game than actual nukes. Like I said earlier, I have a thousand plus hours into Hoi, and not once have I seen the Axis naval invade Britain, so unless you take the initiative, well, have fun, cause you'll never capitulate the Allies, and God help you if America joins in. The naval mechanics in this game are really, really good. Yay. They tried to fix them with the Man the Guns expansion, but like embarking from San Francisco only to find the village people stored away in the captain's cabin. It only got even gear. The Axis, on the other hand, is where most of the fun is concentrated at. Sure, if you're an ally to Germany, you can steamroll pretty much any nation in Europe, but beware. Uncle Eddie might have one of his seizures again, start declaring war on literally everyone at once. I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I'm kinda retarded. And Italy, well, uh, Italy's a special case. 
Kameraden! Do you know that only 2.4% of the people who view these videos are actually subscribed to the channel? Now, that would mean, statistically speaking, you are not subscribed, which I'm sure would be a clerical error, nothing to be worried about. But of course, you do know what happens to people who are not subscribed to Super Oberführer Stadtmeister Peter de Basiert. Right? Semen? Male semen would be the best taste in the world. The real fun is in the alternate history factions you can create yourself, like the revived Central Powers, the Fourth International, or wait, what the fuck? Yo! The focus stream mechanic allows for very specific events to take place, with small or sometimes big changes depending on the world situation, thus adding a lot of very much needed flavor even to smaller countries. The focus tree system is so good they even tried shoehorning it into EU4. The amount of choices you get depending on the nation you're playing really adds a ton of replayability to each game. Wanna play as Imperial Germany instead of regular old monetized Germany? Wanna attack China as Japan, protect them from the Soviets up north, or even go communist yourself and ally Mao? Wanna ally Germany as Italy or die? Now, like an old Yugo, this review needs to stop every two minutes so I can point out how every time I praise Paradox for creating a good mechanic, they almost always find a way to fuck it up. Some of the focus trees are great, but others are just so bland and uninspired, sometimes even actually being weaker than the default focus tree. But Peter, it probably takes a really long time to BULLSHIT! I, Peter, the laziest piece of shit in the entire Eastern Bloc, made three mods with fully fledged focus trees all by myself in less time than it takes them to do one. And I would have done more if they hadn't changed their stupid mod editing procedures so I can't update or work on them anymore. Never mind that, most of the focus trees and core mechanics of the games are locked behind DLCs that cost way more than they offer in return in a practice now synonymous with Paradox's games. And I'm not talking about Europa Universalis 4 Ultimate Ebook Pack. Stuff like Land Lease is locked behind the Eastern European expansion. Land Lease! Yes, hello cripple, I mean Ronsmelt. Uh, the Germans killed 3 million men in the last two weeks. We are running out of guns, trucks and copies of Death Capital, fixed pronouns edition. Uh, could you send some supplies maybe? Sorry old Joe, but you didn't buy the Death or Dishonor DLC. There is physically nothing I can do to help you. I mean literally, I am in a wheelchair. Chapter... I don't know, fucking... Achievements. Now, believe it or not, I actually love the unique way in which achievements work in Paradox games. You see, in order to get an achievement in their games, you need to play on Iron Man mode, which means no loading previous saves if you fuck up. One run, one try. Which actually makes them worthwhile, rare, and satisfying to complete. They also play a very important part in that, technically speaking, Paradox Grand Strategy games have no end goal. I mean, you could just say World Conquest is, you know, the ultimate goal of every strategy game, but that's just so tedious and gets boring really fast. However, specific achievements provide interesting and challenging positions to strive for, thereby giving much needed meaning to every run. However, Two glaring issues come up here. One, there's simply not enough achievements in the game, which is frankly the stupidest and most That's easily fixable small. problem bugging Hoy. I mean, EU4 has That's literally hundreds, big. and Paradox even had a contest for fan achievement submissions, from which they only put out one in the game! Like. Okay, it literally requires no effort or new content to just put these in game, and they'll be drastically increasing the actual reasons to play the game. But apparently, Swedish people are allergic to money or something, I don't fucking know. The second issue with the achievement system is that you'd have a run for 3 to 4 hours going fine, and then the AI would turn on Serbian mode, do some run ending shit, like not give you territories you need for a given achievement as your ally, or declaring war on you with a non-aggression pact already signed. And these are some of the most frustrating and infuriating things that can happen to you in any video game, as it is a literal waste of time. A giant investment of several hours for absolutely nothing in return. This shit isn't annoying, it's soul crushing, as it happens time after time, making you wonder why the fuck you are playing a so called grand strategy game with little actual paying attention to the scream in the middle of the night when there's so much more you can do. Because time is running out, the world is going to shit, and you have to somehow grow up already. Oh look, there's a Dirty Hattie reference. Okay, so if I hate Paradox so much, then why am I still playing their games? Well, because the chassis that is Hearts of Iron 4 is so good on its own, and if you have decent developers you can make something really fun with it, like Kaiserreich, 
an alternative universe mod in which the good guys win World War I. The Entente goes commie, Germany creates the EU 60 years earlier, and you get to play as the amazing, the incredible, the man, the myth, the legend, Huey P. Long Dong! The mod genuinely gives almost every country a focus street with a fair selection of nuanced and interesting choices. My only gripe is with a lot of the peace deals and faction mechanics are locked behind specific events, so that while you have a wide variety of fun curated experiences, in the end, each one is <coughs> In the end, each is a much less organic and spontaneous than a run in the base game. Also, for some reason, nobody builds planes and it's very laggy past the 3 year mark. All those things aside, Kaiserreich is still the Hoi 4 experience with the most amount of content, and there's always fun to be had in this richly detailed world. No, I'm not biased, shut up! I'm impressed with the technical side of this mod and the whole organization behind the team, but personally this is too much even for me. I don't know, it just doesn't make sense for me to set a game about lowly bandits or raiders and makeshift battalions in a framework of World War II simulator. You know, the largest human conflict in history. Yikes. Still, kudos to these guys for trying, and if it's your sort of thing, go ahead and give it a try. These next few mods are actually my own. Yes, that's right, I developed them all by myself. And while some of them have very glaring flaws, I'll have you know that the only reason I started modding the game in the first place was because I could barely run it on my laptop, so I just made my own game instead. Baltica. The Baltic nations unite to actually stand a chance against their threatening neighbors, and are given the choice to either try and turn the Germans back to democracy using covert agents, or literally fortify everything and become a coastal fortress. The Christmas Peace of 1914 doesn't break and hundreds of soldiers unite against their imperialist masters, establishing a multinational state in former Belgium. You can go full anarchist or co-rule with the Belgian government in exile. There's some other options too. Britain's Asian colonies rebel in the 1920s and win their independence after a bloody but decisive war in India and Africa. This one has my most ambitious mod to date. There were multiple focus trees planned for the UK, Egypt, Rhodesia, India, Pakistan, Burma, Australasia, and South Africa, but I only finished uh, Egypt and Confederatia Pacifica, with Rhodesia being basically done, until Paradox changed their fucking launcher and now I can't even update my own files. So uh, yeah, if anyone can help me out watching this, I would seriously appreciate it. Alright, enough moping around, time for a lightning round. Sounds like the title of an anime is the base game but even nerdier actually gives you stuff to do past 1945. Haha, <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. Oh my God. Set your class, boys. Hearts of Iron 4 is a great medium PlayStation game, as it requires more investment than your average round of FPS or RTS or USS Liberty, but also doesn't overstay its welcome unless you're masochistic enough to chase some of the rarer achievements. The engine and combat mechanics are an excellent framework for a World War II game that lets you play as technically any country in the world, and if you counter in the mods, has enough content to never truly be boring. And we haven't even talked about the partially functional multiplayer. That said, would I recommend it? No! Paradox shouldn't be given any money until they start behaving like adults and stop putting essential mechanics in DLCs. For God's sakes, Hoy isn't even their worst example of this, but if you want to buy it so bad, then just get the base version. You can play the expansion so long as you're in a multiplayer game with someone who has them, and the countless free mods will give you all the content you'll ever need. And this sucks for me to say, as Paradox devs are some of the most devoted people in the gaming industry. People like Daniel or DDR Jake, who got hired after becoming famous for being the first person to beat the hardest achievement in Europa Universalis 4 on the hardest difficulty, regularly stream fun events with themselves and have monthly and weekly developer diaries, which are an example of remarkable transparency in the current industry. These factors together create quite a conundrum. On one hand, you have some of the friendliest and most human developers in the entire world, on the other, some of the most predatory and unashamed marketing practices on the planet. Quite a contradiction, an oxymoron, a paradox, if you will. 